Let me show you some tips and tricks for improving battery life on the CM Phone 2 Pro. So in order to fix battery draining issues or prevent fast battery aging, first we're gonna go to settings. And over here we can perform most of these uh, tips and tricks to improve battery life. And most of them are actually in the battery settings. However, before we actually move to the battery, first we're gonna go to display because there are also some display settings that are worth checking out in order to improve the battery life, such as the adaptive brightness. While I understand that you might prefer to always have the same brightness level of the screen or manually adjust the brightness, it is still recommended to use adaptive brightness or the automatic brightness in order to um, slow down the process of uh, battery draining. This definitely helps you uh, slow that process down because the lower the brightness of the screen, the lower is the battery consumption. So definitely worth considering that. Besides that, we also have the screen timeout, which by default, I believe is set to either 30 or 15 seconds. I'm quite not sure. And these two values are just good enough. So if you switched to, if you increased to like one minute or two minutes, uh, perhaps you should consider switching to 15 seconds or 30 seconds. There is also screen attention that also prevents your screen from turning off if you are looking at it. However, I still believe that it is better to keep this option off and just tap on the screen whatever it is about to uh, turn off so or time out. So consider adjusting these options as well. And there is also the dark, uh, the dark theme, which is enabled by default. We actually use it by default on this phone. And I understand that some people might prefer to use the light theme instead, but generally speaking, dark theme uses less battery. Um, so if you are not a fan of dark theme, you should consider creating a schedule based even on a custom time so that the dark theme can be activated at a given time when, for example, you use the phone the least. So um, consider enabling and using the uh, dark theme. And of course, there is also the matter of the refresh rate, because obviously if you use only 60 hertz, then we have better battery life as even it is descripted uh, or written over here. But at the same time, I, I'm not a fan of 60 hertz. I definitely prefer to use 120. And I assume that is the case in your, um, of yours as well. So at least try to use dynamic. If you deeply care about the uh, battery life, then try to use dynamic and try to get used to it. You still use 120 hertz most of the time. Um, but of course, when needed, the phone can just automatically switch down to 60 hertz. However, if you still prefer to use 120 all the time, then I completely understand it. Nevertheless, I still had to show this option because it obviously has an impact on battery consumption. And there is also the HDR display, which enables peak brightness for HDR content. However, especially if you do not use HDR at all, or if you barely watch any HDR videos, then of course there is no reason to even use this option, so consider turning this off. There is one more thing before we move to battery, and that is in lock screen settings, and it is of course always on display. This feature also, while it is cool to use, it also drains the battery quite a lot. So if you really not use AOD all the time, or you just, you know, you just have it to show off that your phone has always on display, then I believe it is better to, to just turn it, off, turn it off because obviously it's just a cool gimmick, but it has a pretty high cost. The battery uh, drains a little bit faster if we have this option enabled. So besides that, of course, now we're gonna move to the battery settings. And over here we have the battery saver, which is always good to use, especially if we are in a certain situations where it is critical to keep the battery um, for as long as possible. Meaning that if you are in a situation where you need to keep the battery alive for as long as possible because you don't have the charger or power adapter, you don't have the option to charge your phone, 
then of course the battery saver is your savior. And you can also create a schedule, as you can see over here, we can create a schedule based on a percentage and we can set it, for example, to like 30, 20% up to you really. But let's say that you set it to 30%, in that case, if the battery drops to 30%, then the phone will automatically turn on the battery saver. And there is also this option, turn off at 90%. Which, well, as the name suggests, if we start charging our phone and we reach 90%, then the battery saver will be automatically disabled, if it was enabled, of course. However, there is a little catch. There is also an option that allows you to charge your phone or limit the battery charging to 70 or 80%. So this means that this option never works in that specific case. So um, it is, it's just worth mentioning. Besides that, we have adaptive battery, which should be enabled. It is recommended to keep this enabled. There is also the uh, battery health option where we can use smart charging mode that charges steadily overnight to preserve long-term battery health, which is especially useful um, if you charge at night. So if you always like go to sleep and you plug your phone to the charger, definitely worth using this option it will help your uh, battery um, keep the um, the battery health for much much longer besides that there is also the custom charging mode we can only use uh, one of these two and if you use custom charging mode you pretty much set up the battery limit so when you charge your phone it will limit itself to 70 percent it won't exceed 70 percent you will only be able to charge to 70 percent but there is also 80% and 90%. And the sweet spot is 80% because this is how batteries work nowadays. Um, if you keep your battery between 20 and 80%, then it is the most optimal way of using the battery. And you will have, theoretically at least, in theory, you will have the slowest battery aging possible. Well, if you stick with it. Uh, of course, I understand that it is inconvenient for some people to keep the battery only to 80%. I understand if you prefer to have 100%. So uh, I will understand if you switch, for example, to smart charging mode instead. But it is worth considering this option. And I also mentioned 20%. So um, like I mentioned, this is the optimal way of keeping the battery um, in a healthy state for as long as possible. That is between 20 and 80%. 20% because if your battery drops to 20%, it is the best time to start charging. And you should definitely avoid um, draining the whole battery to 0%. So if you can, avoid that at all cost. Although, of course, if it happens like several times, it won't be like bad for your battery um, at all. Like if you do this all the time, then of course it will have negative effects. But if it happens only rarely, then you shouldn't be worried that much. So I think that's about it, although I'm just gonna also check other options. So over here there's also the sleep standby optimization, which allows the device temporarily uh, to temporarily limit network and other features for battery saving when you are asleep. Um, so definitely also worth keeping this option on. There is also the charging assistant, although I don't think it really matters for the battery itself, it's just for information, to provide you some information about charging. And that's about it. So over here, of course, we also have the battery information, so you can check the capacity, which of course ideally is 100%, but after some time the battery aging will kick in and it will um, keep it dropping. So uh, this is a good way to check uh, the condition of your battery. But that is essentially it. These, I believe, are the most important things that we can do on our CMF Phone 2 Pro in order to keep the battery in a healthy state for as long as possible and slow down the process of battery aging so that it can um, appear much much later than usual. And you don't have to use every single one of these tips, you don't have to implement them. If some of them are inconvenient for your daily use, then um, just don't do them. You just should consider them using, using them pretty much. So. That's about it. And also, by the way, if you have any other additional tips for other people that you think are worth mentioning, then share them in the comments, please. And that's all. Thanks for watching.
Leave a like and subscribe to my channel and see you in my next videos. Bye.